Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm reviewing the Dust Silver D84 keyboard. This is an ANSI 75 style keyboard that has an MSRP of $149.99 at the time of this review. Now, Dust Silver did send this to me for review, so I wanna give a huge thanks to them. It won't affect what I say about the review, but without them helping us out, we wouldn't have been able to cover this. So I just always like to say that just to be full disclosure, but again, it doesn't shape our opinions on things. Now, I will have links in the description below to take you to the Dust Silver website and wherever else you can purchase this. I don't have any special kickbacks or any affiliate things set up with Dust Silver, at least at the time of this review. I just wanted to cover this because it was an interesting looking board. Now I went with the blue pink milkshake design because frankly, I just wanted to have something different, fresh and unique to look at, you know, from the normal boards that I normally cover. And I also paired it with this pretty amazing table mat also from Dust Silver. This table mat's only $15 and the size of it is perfect for an ANSI 75 style board to give you some overflow for the mouse. The designs are unique, both on the table mat and the keyboard. So take a look at their website. They have different color scheme options for the D84. It's not like you're just stuck with the pink milkshake, but I must warn you, Dust Silver does not do subtlety. They do bold, unique, in your face designs. Some of them are more subtle than others, but it won't be for everybody, but you might find a design that you absolutely love. So take a look at their website to see if one speaks to you. Now my keyboard aspect came with the Gatoron G Pro red switches. Uh, they are really nice linear switches. And this also came with five side dyed PBT caps, keycaps. That is a high quality cap, both from a durability and a process standpoint or a production standpoint. It's not a cheap process, so the key cap value is excellent here as well. For those of you unfamiliar with PBT caps, the, there are exotic materials out there because you can obviously switch the caps out. ABS is your most common stuff on the more affordable boards, and while inexpensive, ABS does wear over time. And there are different quality levels of ABS that have better long-term durability, but they eventually have a shine. Even a MacBook Pro, which is a $3,000 laptop in higher spec, will have a shiny keyboard after a while. PBT caps wear extremely well. They won't have that same shine. They just have a different lighting and feel process to them. But overall, I like PBT, PBT caps more just for the long-term ownership. Now, if you don't like the smooth and quiet linear actuation of the Gatoron Reds, they also have the black, brown, and blue switches available, all with their own actuation, feel, and sound. Regardless of what switch you use, they all have the same four millimeter travel distance. Now, Dust Silver takes a lot of pride in the build quality and feature set you get in this price range. Inside the chassis, you get sound absorbing Eva cotton, the PCB pad, aluminum plate, and silicon pad. The whole board is sandwiched together in an ABS plastic chassis that comes apart via clips. So be careful when you're removing it in case you wanna do anything like a tape mod they are pressure fit on the outside. The side rails are also removable and replaceable. At the time of this review, I haven't seen them sell the side rails separately, although different Dust Silver uh, keyboards come with different color side rails depending on your spec. However, because of the nature and how they're removed and how easy it is to mask off, technically you could take these off and do your own custom paint or wraps or whatever you may do later. So it's food for thought for additional customization options. Now, instead of having a volume wheel on the top right corner, you get this Dust Silver cap. It's a different color than obviously the base chassis of the board, but if you slide it out, you get a switch here and that switch is showing me my Bluetooth, USB or wireless mode. There's also a tiny 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle inside. So you can plug this in with Windows with the included transmitter or the included USB cable, or if you just wanna use Bluetooth, you can do that as well. Now, speaking of customization, Dust Silver includes a tool in the box to remove both the keycaps and the switches. Removing the keycaps exposes the hot swappable switches inside. The board supports three pin and five pin MX mechanical switches, making it a great platform to start with. The board has a thousand hertz polling rate in wired mode, and the switches are rated for 100 million key presses. Now, Dust Silver does not provide or include any special software to customize the keyboard, which some people will see as a bonus or a detractor, depending on what level of customization you're looking for. Instead, they use a combination of the function button to do various changes to the RGB lighting and other settings on the keyboard. Holding down function and Q will change the light pattern to several different ones built into the keyboard. And then holding down function and using the arrows up, down, left, right will change your brightness and speed. If you hold down function and press Z, you can actually change the RGB lighting on the front of the board, which has its own unique pattern. It's not as diverse as the patterns you get on top. I think you get about five to choose from, but at least they give you the option to pick which one you like or even turn it off if you don't want any. 
Overall, RGB illumination isn't bad. I like the patterns in effects and in battery mode, as you can see, it goes to sleep rather quickly. You can change some of those settings, although I couldn't quite figure out how long I could extend it. It didn't seem to change the speed or the battery saving option, regardless of uh, whatever button I pressed according to the manual, which gives you a lot of other functions as well. You can even press function and hold down the W or the M to switch from Windows to Mac mode. I think because the PCB is a little bit darker and these keycaps are not transparent in any way, you don't expect an overall very bright RGB illumination. You don't get any illumination on the letters themselves because the keycaps are solid. Now, depending on what keycaps you switch to, there are some transparent ones out there or ones that let through more light and that'll give you a different RGB effect. So if you need brighter, either look at a different board or perhaps consider the keycap switch. Now, aside from the keyboard needing to last and work reliably for a long period of time, perhaps the most important thing is the typing experience. How does it feel when you type? How accurately can you type? What does it sound like? And are all the keys going through? Are you getting wireless issues if you're on that mode? To me, this is where Dust Silver performed exceptionally well. Like this was the surprise for me because I don't always know what to expect from brands I'm not familiar with. I think it's immediately apparent if you're coming from a keyboard from like a store-bought gaming supplier, and I'm not name dropping or dissing some other keyboards, but less expensive gaming keyboards in general or the mainstream brands typically aren't going to give you the level of quality that these switches and stabilizers give you. These switches are pre-lubed, they have excellent stabilizers, and one of the most noticeable things is how little the key switch movement is and the sound. The chassis of this is no joke. So if I type on this, let's do a few sound tests, then I wanna compare it to some other boards I have. I'm gonna do a few harder presses just because I, I like to show if there's any kind of a ping or resonance in the chassis. So I'm gonna hit a few of these kind of hard. Now the only key switch that obviously sounds different is the space bar and that's the most noticeable change when you get into like a shift versus the f key it's a little bit different there too but the most noticeable one is always the space bar and you just can't beat physics it's a larger key you know the key cap is much wider than something like the f key so you can hear a big difference here the stabilizers are still excellent you can't really change physics that's the way it is but what's really noticeable as well is how stiff the chassis is when you look at the back plate and how thick their backplate is, there is like no chassis flex whatsoever. So even if you push hard, it feels incredibly solid. The chassis is really well made. There's no weird noises or flexes. Now I have a few keyboards here just to do a quick typing comparison test. I know this isn't like a direct translation to what this board is, but I just wanted to show you several boards because they all have different properties to them. So here I have the new Vulcan Mini from Rock Hat. Then I'm going to type on the Steel Series Apex 9. Then I'm going to type on the Drunk Deer A75. The Drunk Deer A75 has a noticeable resonance or ping, so I'm going to try to get it to do that. Maybe I'll boost audio, but you can hear what I'm talking about. I like that keyboard a lot, but the resonance was the only thing that was driving me crazy. And now I want to type on the SteelSeries Apex Pro. You can hear such a big difference. Honestly, even with all of these so far, you can tell that the Dust Silver just sounds and feels like a more solid board. Everything is precise. The only noise you're really hearing is the switch movement and not so much anything resonating or coming from the chassis itself. Now, as much as I love this board, I don't feel like there's any single product that's perfect. And to me, the one thing that's hard to swallow is the lack of a volume knob. Now I'm an audio guy and I use a lot of fixed gain audio equipment, which means I use a separate volume knob anyway. However, there are times where having that built-in volume knob comes in handy. Instead of the volume knob where you typically see a 75 style board, you have that removable cover I mentioned earlier where you have the USB transmitter 
and the switch. You can still adjust Windows volume on this keyboard. All you have to do is hold down function and then press F5 or F6 in Windows mode, for example, and that'll change the volume. It's a higher function button on Mac and it tells you which one that is in the uh, settings or the manual that's included. So not the best thing. I just like having a knob, but I can see why they put the transmitter there. It's clean and for some people who don't care, not a big deal. Now what's really nice about this chassis design though is the underside. I already mentioned you have a removable USB-C port and it's nothing proprietary. It's not offset. There's no weird recess. So you can use aftermarket USB-C cables. What's really cool about this design as well is once you put this cable in, you can route it, route it straight through the back or run it through either side. This is really nice for people who are kind of OCD with wire management and don't want their cable you know, coming across in only one spot. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. Now, in addition to that, in terms of flexibility, you also have these rubber feet that kick out. You basically get three different angles. You can have the low profile, which is flat. You can flip the smaller feet out to lift it back up, or you can lift the larger foot out to give yourself an even uh, steeper angle. What's really nice about this design is there's always a little bit of rubber making contact on all four points. Some keyboards, they don't put rubber on the feet and they rely instead on just rubber on the base. This is a more stable approach and I appreciate that little attention to detail. Now I think with the D84, it really comes down to if there's a design you like and this has the features you want. The switches and chassis are so good though that you could even treat this as a basic kit keyboard even though it has a unique build already. The chassis and switch design is that good. It just feels so solid in hand. I love everything they've done to it. It just may not have the color scheme you're looking for. So I like this board so much that I've really considered popping the side rails off to paint them, buy my own switches, and perhaps even repaint the chassis underneath to make it look like how I want it to look. Like just take the plastic shell off, custom paint that in here, and then get some unique switches. Then I can take advantage of that entire center or internal build that is so good on this board and what made me like it so much. I don't know if I'll do that and modify it, but it's good enough that at least I'm considering it. So just keep that in mind. If you find a color scheme you like on the website that fits your design and what you're looking for, then you're getting an excellent deal because the keyboard seriously performs at or above the best I've used in this price range. It feels amazing to type on. So I hope you found the review helpful. I enjoyed reviewing this and it's kind of opened my eyes up as far as how good some higher end keyboards can get. There'll be more stuff on keyboards and audio as always going forward. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you at the next video. With that being said, stay safe out there and I'll see you next time. Bye.